You and I have very little in common, but we have one thing. We uh, have some Jesuit training in our background. Oh, I don't know. But I would say that the Jesuit training, I believe, gives you a sort of clarity of mind, a reasoning power, which you don't, you don't realize it while you're being uh, taught as a young boy, but that's what they're doing to you. In 1973, Jesuit tactics were used in a film that was nothing more than the promotion of the Jesuit order, The Exorcist. The most feared deity of ancient Babylon, Pazuzu, was a demon that was possessing this young girl in this film. Based upon the true account of a Jesuit priest, the film makes God look weak and powerless, but the Catholic Church strong and majestic. Where an actual Jesuit priest, William O'Malley, stars in the film. The writer and producer of The Exorcist, William Peter Blatty, was educated by the Jesuits in Georgetown. Modern cinema is modelled upon Alfred Hitchcock, but its style can be traced back to the magic lantern of the 1400s, where a 17th century German Jesuit priest, Athanasius Kircher, revolutionised its invention to an occultic art form to lure people away from the Bible back into the fear of Jesuitized Catholicism. He is also the father of broadcasting with his megaphone. So why do few people know about the Jesuits and what impact do they have on the world today? Jesuitism is an impenetrable mystery to 99 out of 100 of the Jesuits themselves. Russian mystic Madame Blavatsky had access to their own writings and quotes from them. The order has secret signs and passwords according to the degrees to which the members belong. And as they wear no particular dress, it is very difficult to recognize them unless they reveal themselves as members of the order. There is also a secret class known only to the general and a few faithful Jesuits which perhaps more than any other contributed to the dreaded and mysterious power of the order, says Nicolini. The Jesuits operate in a world that few people can see and that is why they are so successful at what they do. In 1773, when the Jesuits were abolished under its head Lorenzo Ricci, Adam Weissart, a Jesuit professor of canon law, continued something that the Jesuits had achieved for almost two centuries, infiltration. On this Catholic church in East London, you can see a pentagram. But in Freemasons Hall in Covent Garden in London, the headquarters of the United Grand Lodge of Masons in England, you can also find the pentagram. Freemasonry is seen as the most secret of the secret societies. But what is Catholic Jesuitized symbols such as the IHS doing in Masonic lodges? Jesuits you can see in this picture with the skull and bones. Later, Freemasons also have the skull and bones. The double-headed eagle of the Holy Roman Empire can also be seen among the high degrees of Freemasonry. And the famous evil eye of ancient Babylon and Egypt can also be found on the apron of Masons. In a book approved by the Jesuits, it says, In 1902, the Masonic historian J.G. Findlay wrote that the Jesuits had succeeded in all parts of the globe in creating strife and confusion among Freemasons by tampering with the rituals and by the introduction of higher degrees. When European scientists attempted to recreate the so-called Big Bang Theory in 2008, it was highlighted in the film Angels and Demons. But what is generally overlooked is, who actually created the Big Bang Theory? The Big Bang Theory was first described but not so much named by the French Jesuit George Lemaitre in the late 1920s. His picture of the universe expanding from a single point was certainly controversial but has now become scientific orthodoxy. The scientific community that actually praises itself on its secularization believes in the Big Bang Theory, scientific speculation that has still never been proven, which shows that Jesuit scientific philosophy dominates the direction of modern science, where the top Jesuit science astronomers are Darwinists, who try to merge the secular and the sacred which is called theistic evolution, for Jesuitism is founded not on the Bible, but upon the teachings of Aristotle, where the Jesuits ratio sudorium still impact secular education today. It should not be overlooked that the advantages as well as the disadvantages of our humanist classical education are for the most part attributable to that pedagogic activity which at one time was spread by the Society of Jesus all over the world. The Jesuit president of Boston College, William Lachey, caused controversy when he welcomed warmonger Condoleezza Rice to Boston College, but this is not the first. The Dutch Protestant prince, William the Silent, 
was killed by the Jesuit assassin Balthazar Gerard. The French Catholic monarch Henry III as well as his cousin and successor protestant king Henry IV were both killed by Jesuit assassins as well as Italian economist Pellegrini Rossi. Why this fascination with Werder? Blavatsky tells us why. The Jesuits reckoned among the greatest achievements of the order that Loyola supported by a special moral to the Pope, a petition for the reorganization of the abominable and abhorred instrument of wholesale butchery, the infamous tribunal of the Inquisition. The Jesuits took over the Inquisition from the Dominicans. And while many people think it is long gone, the London Guardian of 2006 tells us that the Inquisition formally ended only 40 years ago. In that same year, a Dominican, Joseph Augustine de Noy, said that the Inquisition was justified. That it means all these horrific instruments that bring the most excruciating pain, as well as torture, secret courts, military tribunals, and no trial by jury are just. When Benedict XVI visited Brazil, he praised the history of Catholicism, but he was blasted by the late Venezuelan president, Hugo Chavez, for the horrors of the Latin American Holocaust that was imposed upon them. But the Catholic Church, to justify its horrors, made the film Apocalypto, which shows the natives of Latin America as complete savages who were saved by the Catholic Church. But there is one country, despite its own colonial horrors, that has put up the strongest resistance to the Papal Inquisition and the British Supreme Court has a monument of King John and the Magna Carta as a memorial to this. What is the Magna Carta? The best authority on this is the Protestant historian J.A. Wiley. The great principle conceded so early as the days of King John in Magna Carta after it's confirmed in the reign of Charles II in the famous act of Habeas Corpus and held by all statements who have flourished since to be one of the main foundations of British liberty, namely the inviability of the subject saved by the authority of law. There are other monuments in places like Runnymede in the south of England near the River Thames where the Magna Carta was actually signed as a memorial to this resistance. There are also memorials in places like Bury St Edmunds in the east of Anglia that records the famous Magna Carta and the hundreds of knights and the 25 names of the barons that stood up to the Pope and pressured England's king to sign this charter. King John did not want to give in to the authority of the Pope, but when Innocent III, the godfather of the Inquisition, who eventually condemned the Magna Carta, threatened him, he gave in and handed his crown to the Pope's ambassador to England. But the English were not having it, and on the 12th of June, 1215, he signed the Magna Carta, which English jurist Edward Coke adopted into English common law. The Puritans and founding fathers in the colonies of the United States also adopted it into their constitution which is now coming on the question. Section 39 of the Magna Carta reads, No free man shall be seized or imprisoned or stripped of his rights or possessions or outlawed or exiled or deprived of his standing in any other way, nor will we proceed with force against him or send others to do so except by the lawful judgment of his equals or by the law of the land. But we're now seeing that secular politicians and judges on the back of the war on terror are trying to stealthily incorporate the principles of the Inquisition in the British system and EU laws are undermining the authority of the Magna Carta, aligning itself with the threats of Pope Innocent III by sounding almost identical to Roman Catholic canon law. A person accused in a penal case can, even though absent, be brought to trial before the tribunal of the place in which the offence was committed. Accusing a person of a crime before it is committed is also from the Inquisition, which is displayed in the trailer of this post 9-11 film, Minority Report. Positive for Howard Marks. Mr. Marks. My mandate of the District of Columbia Pre-Crime Division. I'm placing you under arrest for the future murder of Sarah Marks and Donald Dubinow to take place today, April 22nd, at 0800 hours. Where does the torture method of waterboarding actually come from to extract information from a suspect? It is from the Papal Inquisition. As well as methods like Spying on your neighbors in the United States Patriot Act, which the last United States President George Bush Jr. incorporated into U.S. law. He also incorporated secret prisons and told the spying agency the NSA to spy on phone conversations of United States citizens. 
that was acted out in a film that did the exact same thing in 2008, The Dark Knight. With constant terror laws being passed threatening freedoms, President Obama continues the Inquisition with glorifying the use of torture in Catherine Bigelow's film Zero Dark Thirty. While many may laugh and mock and think that the Jesuit agenda is outdated, the last Superior General of the Jesuit, Peter Hans Kovenbach in 2003 tells us their objective. The efforts of the Jesuits to bring Britain back to the Catholic faith have been praised by the leader of the order. But is not Britain a Protestant nation with a secular culture? What exactly do you mean by that? The Battle of Hastings, Henry VIII, Elizabeth I and the Magna Carta are among studies that will no longer be compulsory in a revised curriculum to be sent to schools. They could learn how Henry VIII was dressed, but nothing about the Reformation. Oxford Don John Wycliffe started the European Reformation in the 14th century to restore a superstitious age back to the true knowledge of God. In the Battle of Hastings in 1066, William conquered Britain for Rome. But during the Reformation, Henry VIII separated Britain from Rome. Britain's unsung hero, William Tyndale, continued from Wycliffe in the 16th century in the translation of the Bible, which was completed in the 1611 King James Version, which even English Catholics have benefited from. The Reformation gave us true science, divine philosophy, the media, freedom of the press, freedom of speech, the right of society to govern itself according to justice and equity, educating the masses, public libraries, religious and civil liberty to protect us from ecclesiastical tyranny. But all these freedoms are slowly being eroded and undermined. In the 13th century, Catholic German bishop Eberhard II called the Pope the Antichrist and Babylon. Three centuries later, Martin Luther did the same thing. Why did they call the Pope the Antichrist? In the Pope's own words, in the book Crossing the Threshold of Hope, it says, The leader of the Catholic Church is defined by faith as a figure of Jesus Christ and is accepted as such by believers. The Pope is considered the man on earth who represents the Son of God who takes the place of the second person of the omnipotent God of the Trinity. Have no fear, he says, when people call me the Vicar of Christ, when they say to me, Holy Father, or your holiness, or use titles similar to these which seem even inimical or in conflict to the Gospel. This has not stopped Protestants like Billy Graham and one of the former heads of the Church of England, Lord Kerry, to accept papal supremacy. And bishops like T.D. Jakes were now dressing like Roman Catholic cardinals and are now a part of the movement to merge all the Protestant churches with Rome. Why is this? The late Avram Manhattan tells us why. Ecumenism, which from its very beginning coupled with Protestantism left its political bent, resulted in the enfeeblement of the major Protestant bodies. So we see that the Jesuits are working with the Protestants to weaken the Protestant churches, and this was done through the power very recently confirmed by a Jesuit in Vatican II. Vatican II was opened by Pope John XXIII, and he gave it the instructions to Jesuit Cardinal Augustine Beer. And we've seen in Vatican II the attire of the bishops is in this papal mitre from ancient Babylon. But what we are now seeing that Protestant churches are now adopting the attire of the papacy, which shows that the Jesuits' work and agenda of infiltration and conquering Protestant churches has almost come to completion.